Well, I'm out here on the farm today and I got a job to do. Uh, it used to be a dome shelter sitting right here. And uh, there's some concrete in the ground, like post holes filled up with concrete and a metal rod on the end of a chain inserted into them. And I need to pull those out of the ground so we can clear this spot off and, uh, you know, run our tractors across it. The dome shelter I took down, and uh, I'll talk about it more. I'll talk about it more in, uh, in the video as we go along. So I got a dome shelter here, and uh, we used to put tarps on it, and uh, we would uh, store hay in here. We did that for a number of years, and uh, but I had another dome shelter just like this one in that uh, field out there in the corner, and I took it up. The way these the way these shelters are fastened to the ground is what I did is I took a post hole digger and I dug holes in the ground, and there's holes along this frame that runs along the, the perimeter of the shelter. And what I did is I took a, uh, it's a kind of an L-shaped anchor, and I hooked it to a chain, a short chain, and I let that chain go on down in the ground. And then I just uh, poured quickcrete into the end of the ground uh, just just enough to get about a six or eight inch uh, piece of concrete uh, in the ground and then piled the dirt back over it and the idea was I could screw these shelters down and take them back up if I needed to and uh, by having a chain and a bolt arrangement like this hooked to it when the time came to pull the concrete out of the ground uh, I'd have something to hook on to. So we're going to see if that will work, if I can yank those things out of the ground on the old shelter site down there. It's probably about 63 degrees. I've got a short sleeve on. And, uh, you know, it's kind of greening up a little bit. I'll probably pull a tick off tonight. So I'm down here where the other shelter was, and... Uh, Right here is one of these rods coming out of the ground. It'll be interesting to see if I can actually pull them out. To do this job, I'm going to need a short 4x4. Four four. The Massey Ferguson 1105. First chore for the 1105 in 2021. I'm also going to need a big clevis that'll fit up on this drawbar. A big chain. I'm going to need another clevis to get in like that. And then I'm going to need washers and a nut. Chain, I got the chain fastened down. First thing I'm gonna do is just try it without the four by four, but I think I'm gonna need it. And I'm gonna try to pull straight with the draw bar. So I'm gonna have to go down over this hill, I reckon. No problem. So 
So there's the hole, and there's the piece of concrete. The rebar's bent. I mean, it's better if I don't have to deal with the hassle of that 4x4. Four four. And uh, right there's the next one. All right, we're hooking up here to the next one. And I'd have too many washers on that one. I want all the thread I can get. All right, let's see what happens with this one. That's the second one. And uh, the third one be in here somewhere. I'll find it. This might be a big mistake, but I'm going to try to do this without the clevis. This uh, hook seems to fit down over it fine. And put the washers on. And uh, put the nut on. Being a hot shot engineer in my day job, I like for three to five threads to stick out past the bolt. So let's see how this works. So that seemed to work pretty good. I thought it was going to. I thought the uh, hook was going to come over the top looking at it from the cab, but that'll make it a lot easier for hooking up the next one instead of wrestling with that clevis over there. Right over here is the next one. Stick it down on there. Put some washers on. I couldn't remember how many of these things I had, but I think I had one in just about every hole in the frame. So you can see. There's one there, there, uh, right here, and then one right here, which I think might be the corner. Preferably, I'd like to pull straight on with the tractor, but uh, seems to be doing okay pulling from the side a little bit. I don't know. If I break one of these things off, I'm going to cry. These things are pulling out at idle. Of course, you know, you concrete block versus 15 plus thousand pounds and so far no contest it's a beautiful day up here just a great day to do this chore and uh it's something that we've been needing to do we want to clear this pad off and get the pallets out of here and we want to be able to run our hay equipment right through here so a lot, a lot of cleanup i got to do
All right, here we go. Well, I spoke too soon on that one. This one we'll have to dig out. And, uh, but the concrete broke. There's the chain. Right there's the chain on the end of that hook. And, uh, but that one broke loose. And I gotta hook up to that one. I ain't gonna make no, uh, no gloating on the rest of these. All right, I got three more to go on this side. And I'm gonna get kind of brave. And I used to do this with a lot of olives. I would hook a chain and I'd have some laterals and I'd pull four or five autumn olives off of a single chain. In this case, I got the end hooked down there. These links fit nicely over top of that half inch. Same there. So, I'm gonna try to pull three of them out at one time. Now, they're not all at the same tension, so I won't be pulling uh, all three of them at the same time and that's what I would do with autumn olives so even though I might be pulling four or five autumn olives uh, really I'm just kind of pulling one at a time and it pulls out and then the chain chain tightens up and then I pull another one and so on and so forth so let's see if we can get uh, three of them on this pull I'm gonna try to idle these out too Get a little slack in the chain. There's three of them pulled out at one time. One, two, three. And that's all of the concrete on this side. And like I said, I got to come back and pull that one out. So we'll do the three or maybe four on the other side. All right, I got this chain hooked to three more. Uh, the last one was over there, and so I'm hooked to three. One, two, three. Hopefully I didn't pull up too far. Let's see how it goes. Hallelujah. All right, I got three, got three more hooked up, and let's see how it goes. Here we go. Well, pull the link out of one of those. Two out of three. Two out of three, not bad. So I got another one to dig up on this side. Right here is a good illustration of how the this thing went down and got in the chain and the chain just kind of fell into the concrete. But uh, this one right here, I'll have to dig it out, so I'll mark it here in just a minute. Out here, one, two, three. And that'll be nine that I've either pulled or pulled the stake out of the ground 
and the tenth one's down there on the end. Somehow I managed to miss that one. Let me hook this thing up. Kind of pulled up and backed up a little bit to get better aligned. Let's see what happens. Looks like I got two and pulled the, the steel link out of the third one. Sure did. Right there it is. We'll have to dig that one out. A little hard to see, but if you step on it, you can see it. And of course, if you ran a tire over that, that would be really bad news. It'd be like running over an antler from a deer. These washers are getting a little distorted, but I'm just about done with this part of the deal. All right, let me pull the Massey Ferguson over here and give it a tug. The 1105 has an accelerator pedal centered right under the steering wheel, so you know you can use your left foot to give it the gas. It's easy enough. It's easy enough to see the end of that chain. I don't know if the video picks it up, but we paint our chains red on the end in the middle so we can see them when they're laying in the grass. Probably need to put another coat of paint on here and then this this clevis is new, we'll paint it red too.